Hi, my name is Sean and I'm an ambassador for Action for Conservation. In this video, I'm going to talk about invasive species. First of all, what makes a species invasive? Well, for a species to be invasive, it has to have colonised a new area where it isn't native, to the point of damaging the surrounding environment, both ecologically and economically. Today, invasive species are seen as one of the top five major threats to our ecosystem. They are capable of altering habitats, reducing biodiversity, competing with native organisms for limited resources, and even causing extinctions of native plants and animals. In fact, approximately 42% of threatened or endangered species are at risk due to invasive species, and their impacts on our natural ecosystems and the economy cost billions of dollars each year. But how do they spread? Invasive species are primarily spread by us humans. Boats and airplanes travel around the world very quickly, and since there are so many of them, it's not unlikely that some species can hitch a ride. Insects can get into wood and crates, and aquatic organisms can be carried on boat propellers. They can also spread from accidental releases, and climate change with its increasing temperatures can enable some invasive plant species to move into new areas. Since many of our activities, whether it be commercial or recreational, depend on healthy native ecosystems, it is important to control the spread of invasive species. So, I'm going to tell you about some of the most common invasive species in the UK. These little creatures were originally native to North America and were imported to Britain in 1876. They didn't cause much of a problem until someone decided to release them into the wild for some reason. Too bad they carried a pox virus that our native red squirrels were very vulnerable to. <coughs> Grey squirrels also breed quicker than red squirrels, are better at collecting nuts and berries, so it's not looking good for the red squirrel. Luckily, using traps, or even introducing natural predators, can help reduce their populations. Funnily enough, these frogs were also native to North America. They were originally introduced to Britain in 1999 as pets, but probably spread into the countryside when people decided to get rid of frog spawn or tadpoles in nearby ponds. It's earned the reputation of one of the most harmful invasive amphibian species, because somehow it's always hungry and eats almost everything. Did I also mention that it carries a disease that's responsible for several global extinctions of other amphibians? What's more, since they're amphibians, it's considerably harder to control their populations. Native to Eastern Asia, these crabs are thought to have been present in England since 1935 and were most likely introduced from ballast water from ships. Although they look cute with their furry mittens on their claws, the attribute were listed as one of the world's top 100 worst invasive species because of the damage they can do to fishing gear, riverbanks, mariculture, and the local biodiversity. It's so widely spread that the extent of its distribution in the UK is currently unclear, so it's really difficult to control. Before I move on, it's important to know that plants that are considered as invasive species are not necessarily weeds. Weeds can be both non-native or native, and are usually considered only a localised problem rather than a landscape level ecological problem. On the other hand, invasive species are plants not native to the local area, that become so widespread they disrupt the ecosystem by outcompeting native plants. So dandelions, despite being widely considered as weeds, are not an invasive species, and actually have many uses which sadly I'm not going to talk about. You've probably seen this plant in every pond, river or lake you've been to, forming dense floating mats that block water flow, crowd out native plants and take oxygen from fish and insects. It grows up to 20 centimeters every day and has the ability to grow from tiny fragments, making its removal incredibly difficult and expensive. Considering how widespread it is, surprisingly it was only introduced to the UK in the 1980s. Introduced as an ornamental plant in the 19th century, this harmless looking plant grows up to 10 feet high. Despite this, it contains highly toxic sap that reacts with light when in contact with skin, causing blistering within 48 hours. Although not as difficult to control as floating pennywort, it looks almost identical to other plants that are harmless. And proper equipment is still needed to take care of it. It's also illegal to plant or grow. Japanese knotweed is- Don't get me started on this plant! The Victorians in 1886 really thought it was a good idea to give this plant to gardeners. This idiot just decides to grow literally everywhere. 10 centimeters per day, in fact, and it does all kinds of damage that you'll never want. It has even spread through seas. You chop off the tiniest part of the plant and kaboom, another plant. There's so much of it that it's barely even possible to get rid of, and it's just too expensive. Anyway, I hope you learned something new, and thanks for watching.